you have found the In The Verse podcast. Songwriting inspired by pop culture media. With your hosts, Mark Gunn and Mikey Mason. Welcome to In The Verse, song crafting from the Firefly universe or... Other it's not the Firefly too. Universe. I know, anymore. I'm so used to saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Here's what we're going to do uh, we need- we're going to leave that in. We're going to leave that okay. in this time, and I'm going to write you an intro. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the verse. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the verse. My name is Mark Gunn, the creator of the Firefly Drinking Song Show, and I'm Mikey Mason, creator of the Beer Powered Time Machine Podcast, and currently the Mikey Talks Podcast. This is episode one of our new ten episode season of the In the Verse Podcast. One, one, one episode. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Since we are sadly out of episodes of Firefly to discuss and write about. Uh, we're going to just watch them all again and write new songs. But we, don't know. <laughs> we could do that. that, that that's season uh, three or four. <laughs> we're we're going to find it. You know, I doubt that anybody's going to argue. We'll, right. <laughs> we're going to spend our time finding inspiration in episodes of other media, TV shows, comic books, cartoons, maybe even video games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As always, you can support us in this and other creative endeavors by supporting Mikey at patreon.com forward slash Mikey Mason. And by supporting Mark at patreon.com forward slash Keltfather, or if you're in Boston, Seltfather. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say it every time. You do. <laughs> it's stuck in your head, isn't it? <laughs> Upcoming shows. Oh, I, I, that's the reason I was asking about when we were planning on releasing this. Is it going to be done? No, it's probably not. So, um, upcoming up shows. Anyway, just in case, go for it. <laughs> October 28th, uh, I'm doing Coffee with the Celt Father. It's at Thursday at noon. Uh, that is my last of the Coffee with the Celt Father shows on Thursday. Uh, next week, or, or starting in, in um, November, it's going to be on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. All right, and, but uh, since we are talking about Doctor Who today, uh, if this is actually released after that, which it likely will be, they should all get in their TARDIS and go back to Thursday, October 28th, and watch the Boo Scary so- Halloween Songs on Coffee right. with the Kelp Father at noon on Thursday, October 28th, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll still be up on YouTube, so, you know, you can find it, you know. <laughs> Perfect. October 30th, uh, The Lost Druid. November 3rd, I'm doing another Coffee with the Celt Father. I think I had to update that date because, you know, it's now on Wednesday. Uh, November 5th through 7th, Conjuration uh, is a convention here in Atlanta. November 12th, Interstellar Ginger Beer and Exploration Company in Alabaster, Alabama. And November 13th, I have a house concert in Hammond, Louisiana. And, of course, in November, every Wednesday, you're going to be doing Coffee with the Celt Father. Yes, right, at 11 a.m., right, every Wednesday. <laughs> and, uh, wow, you just seem so much more productive than me on the show front because, you know, I'm I'm pretty much done in physical performances for the year unless people want to book me for house concerts or conventions last minute. Uh, I have an 11 uh, – December 11th uh, <laughs> private Christmas party that I'm playing. Other than that, I'm not performing live until – at least I'm not planning to right now until January of 2022. Uh, now, now, to be fair, I'm, I posted my internet shows too. So right, well, I do. <laughs> I you know my my October, I do monthly online shows. My October show happened on uh, October 22nd, which is actually the date we're recording this. So, um, <laughs> uh, but I have one coming up in November, one in December. They haven't been exactly planned yet. You yeah. can check MikeyMason.com. For details, maybe I'll even update the schedule on MikeyMason.com. But these are almost always scheduled for Friday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash comedy rock geek. How are you liking Twitch so far? I mean, Uh, I I assume you're building things up and all that good stuff, right? It's good. You know, I'm kind of firmly seated at affiliate. I am not the kind of person who's going to get out there and do... 30 hours of stuff. I just don't know. It's just not who I am. Although I might, I mean, because I've got nothing better to do. I can get (laughs) up. Mikey's playing cover songs. If you like pina colada. (laughs) (laughs) No. All right. Not so much. Not so much. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) You could do it. I think I'm pretty sure you could. (laughs) I I could do that. I don't know that there'd be any interest in that. (laughs) 
I wouldn't be surprised. You have some fans. They would they would be totally interested in that. <laughs> a Mikey Mason cover song show. Yes. Maybe. Well, they a lot. Yeah, okay. I don't know how many of them they they could stomach before they got tired of eighties <laughs> hair metal. Honestly. Right. Another and Skid Row a, song? Ooh. Another kiss song. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up in uh, in 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 your musical world, your band world? Well, the biggest thing, of course, is that my my CD Selkuth is finally done. You have uh, CDs. I, I have CDs. And <laughs> yes. <they> are, I, <laughs> You've been talking about Selkuth since we started the In the Verse podcast. Know, that's true. Season I, one. I think you're right. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it it's taken a while, but uh, it it is finally completed. I'm, I'm like. You know, there's always, you're always like nitpicking, and I did a lot more of that this time. But probably because, uh, Mitchell, uh, who has been doing my, my editing, he, he's doing it and he's doing it different than I would. And so there's, there's a whole bunch of little fine tunes. You, you know, he, he actually knows a little bit more about engineering than I do. So, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you're, when you're mixing songs, you like, you know, this instrument stands out at this, uh, audio frequency, right? Right. And he knows that stuff. Me, I, I just take, when I put the stuff, I just stack it on each other. I think I do a little bit of a dip on the auto harp so that the vocals stand out a little bit more, but that's about it. Everything else just raises everything up, you know? So, yeah. um, it, it's taken a little bit longer, part, a large part because of that. Um, but it's, it's finally there and the CDs are ordered. I'm going to fulfill the Kickstarters in the next two weeks, I think. And yeah. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Um, yeah. And then the other thing is I, I started since every episode of my Pup Songs and Stories uh, podcast, I record a song, um, usually a song that I've already have on a CD, but I record a song and then I, you know, talk about the song and tell the story behind it, how I, how I picked it up or, you know, wrote it or whatever. And um, my, my plan is to uh, release. I am now releasing the, those MP3s to my patrons on Patreon. So I'm awesome. trying to follow uh, the Mikey Mason uh, uh, thing, you know. <laughs> I know. it's never. I'm not going to get your 52 songs a year, but, you know. <laughs> well, I'm not going to get 52 songs this year either because I have totally what? blown that out of the water. A couple weeks ago, I released 10 songs on New Music Monday. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I dropped a whole album what? on my patrons. <laughs> wow. Uh, but yeah, my Patreon patrons are still getting a new song every Monday. Sometimes they get 10 of them. That's 52 <laughs> songs a year for as little as a dollar a month. That, that's the reason you did it, isn't it? Just so you can say, I released 10 songs on one day. Thank you very <laughs> much. Mic I drop. <laughs> I did it because, uh, here's the complete honest story. I did it because I was going to put that album live. Uh -huh. And I thought my patrons deserved it. And so uh, before I put the album live, I made sure that they had, you know, when the, the album is honestly pay what you want anyway. All my stuff on Patreon is pay what you want. Right. Because it does me no good if you enjoy it but can't listen to it. So yeah. if you can't afford it and you download it and you pay zero dollars because you can't afford it, you can still get the enjoyment out of it. When you can't afford it, you can kick me the equivalent of a beer or two or, or whatever you think is fair for the music that you downloaded. And if you don't like it, you can always delete it and you're not, you know. Yeah. You know. So there you go. As little as a, a dollar a month. 52 songs a year. You're perfectly welcome to pledge more if you want to, and you can afford it. You have to take care of yourself before you take care of anyone else. It's like being on an airplane. They tell you to put your <laughs> oxygen mask on, make sure you're strapped in before you help the kid in the seat beside you. Uh, yeah. And it's not because screw that kid. It's just because you can't, you can't help somebody else unless you're in a position to help them. And you yeah. got to make sure you're there. So anyway, and, uh, you know, the Mikey Talks podcast. That's on my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Mikey Mason. Self-promotional guy is done. We should move on. All right. <laughs> it's time to talk about the episode that we are, uh, we watched this week. So it, obviously the we're... We episode. The episode. We, we've started taking things in a new direction for this podcast. And it all starts with this one. Uh, we both watched the episode Blink. From the TV show Doctor Who, which, oh my God, I love this. I love, I absolutely love this show, this episode. This is one of my favorites. 
Uh, yeah, well, you know, last week I taught I last week, last episode, uh, episode 0, I told the story about getting my sons to watch this for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and it's what my, you know, it's what my my oldest a uh, Hoovian um who has literally seen them all. Oh, nice. <laughs> like everything that's been released, he's seen them all. So <laughs> But yeah, no, this is this is a fantastic episode. Yeah. So uh, shall we go into the plot synopsis and uh <laughs> Let's synopsisize. Let's synopsisize. This plot synopsis is very simplified and is a slightly modified version of the plot synopsis found on the Wikipedia page for the episode. It is absolutely no substitute for watching the episode (laughs) and will definitely contain spoilers. If you haven't seen the episode, you have been warned. (laughs) In 2007, Sally Sparrow, intrigued by a message written to her under peeling wallpaper about the weeping angel, explores the abandoned house Wester Drumlins with her friend Kathy Nightingale. At the moment Kathy disappears, Kathy's grandson, Malcolm, delivers to the house a message from 1987 about the long life Kathy led. Kathy had been sent back in time to 1920. Before leaving the house, Sally takes a Yale key hanging from the hand of a statue. Sally uh, visits Kathy's brother, Larry, at work to tell him that Kathy loves him, as the letter requested. Larry explains that he has been documenting an Easter egg in 17 different DVDs containing a video message of a man having half of a conversation with the viewer. Larry gives Sally a list of the DVDs. Four weeping angel statues follow Sally to the police station, where they take an impounded fake police box and send Detective Billy Shipton, or D.I., Billy Shipton, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, detective, right, Uh, Billy Shipton back to 1969. The man in the Easter egg, a time traveler called the Doctor, has also been sent to the past and asked Billy to replay, to relay a message decades later. Billy puts the Easter egg on the DVDs, and in 2007, a much older Billy phones Sally to visit him on his deathbed in the hospital. Before he dies, Billy instructs Sally to look at the list. The list is Sally's own DVD collection. Sally and Larry return to the house and play the Easter egg on a portable DVD player. Sally discovers she can converse with the doctor in 1969 as he possesses a copy of the complete transcript that Larry is currently compiling. The doctor explains that aliens called weeping angels send people back in time by touching them and feed off the potential energy of the remaining days. The doctor also explains that the weeping angels turn to stone statues when any living creature observes them. He fears that they're seeking the vast reserves of time energy in the police box, which is his time machine, the TARDIS, and could cause enormous damage as a result. A weeping angel pursues Sally and Larry to the basement where the TARDIS is. Sally and Larry use the Yale key to hide inside while the four weeping angels attack. Larry inserts a now glowing DVD, which also functions as a control disc in the console's DVD player. The ship returns to the doctor while leaving Sally and Larry behind. The weeping angels standing around the TARDIS get tricked into looking at each other and are permanently frozen since they're living beings and they're looking at each other. A year later, Sally and Larry meet the doctor prior to his being stuck in 1969. Sally hands the doctor Larry's transcript and warns him that he will need it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what a brilliant episode. <laughs> so this episode is the only episode that season that's written by Stephen Moffat. And mm-hmm. it actually began as a Doctor Who, I believe, an annual uh, comic. Um, was it an annual comic, comic or a short story? I, I it, was, it was in the comic book. Oh, it, was a, okay. it was in the comic series. Okay. And, uh, and so he adapted it because he actually wrote – the comic, the 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 story from the annual. Um, so it wasn't like he stole from anybody but himself. He was like, right. you know, that was a really good that that really should be here. Right. <laughs> and, and they did it. <laughs> so and it was it's it's one of those mind bending time travel. Yeah. Episodes, you know, which of course uh, she points out in the in the thing. How can you know what I'm saying? Well. <laughs> As he explains, I have the transcript. Look to your, uh, <laughs> yeah, look look to to your, your left. left. <laughs> right. <laughs> there are so many great quotable lines in this. That, there are. Look, uh, let's be upfront with everybody. Uh, as we're recording this, 
Mark and I have already written our songs. <laughs> right. <laughs> Speaking of time travel. <laughs> uh, and what happened was, uh, <laughs> so uh, we had some timing issues getting together to record the episode, and they were mostly mine. And, <laughs> yeah, and then, no, I weren't. I, I, you forget <laughs> me, too, two weeks all right, ago. So <laughs> let's equal, all right, we share equal blame. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, when I finally sat down to watch the episode and take the notes... Uh, as soon as I was done, I had an idea and I started writing my song and I messaged Mark and he said, that's okay. I'm kind of already writing my song <laughs> right. too. And, <laughs> and so what we say here, what we discuss here may influence us to write another song or a further right. song. But I have to say, despite all of the super quotable notes, uh, or super quotable quotes in here, I didn't use hardly any of them in the writing of my song. I think he used directly one of them. Just one. I, I used uh, I used a little bit, um, mostly, but mostly it was ideas. Because this is actually the really, really cool thing for me. It was This is actually the first time I've written a song where I had the background. I wrote, I usually write a background on the songs and I would written it already. Uh, that was the first thing I wrote because I was like, I kind of know what this is, song is, this the the story of the number one the story of the episode but also what it makes me think of it all came out uh it was all it, it was all immediately revealed to me and i was able to say huh so what i'm writing an episode is about and what i was going to tell you say at the very beginning was that the episode for me at least was all about missing out about missing out on life and um and so i was like well knowing that I can write a song based on this very idea. And then I just use the, the, uh, many of the, the quotes and such to, uh, help me uh, get me started, get me, uh, started in, in moving in the direction I wanted to go. Yeah. I almost, I literally almost went that same way. Um, yeah. and mostly because of the, uh, DI Billy Shipler's, uh, detective inspector, Billy Shipler. Was that his name? Shipler? Uh, Shipton. 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 Yeah. So, so this is what stands out about this episode for me. Um, mm -hmm. the doctor and his companion are pretty much background characters yeah. in this. And so unlike Firefly, where you and I, of course, have watched extensively and, and know the characters and know the foreshadowing that's coming when we're watching an episode we know what happens later so we know what's being foreshadowed yeah in this episode we're meeting each character for the first and probably only time now i'm not an extensive whovian i don't know if anybody but the doctor and i believe that's his companion and this is martha um i yeah. i i don't believe that anyone other than those two uh and the weeping angels show up ever again the weepy angels i know that they do uh but right. uh, i went i went looking to see if uh if the other characters because i was like if nothing else i was looking for the actors because i was like that that actor the the guy um and there larry he, larry he he looked very familiar so i was like what, what where do i know him from yeah <laughs> and i and so, couldn't figure it out and so there was so much of this that was you're getting introduced to characters <clears throat> and you're learning about the characters and then the characters disappear like yeah. Kathy. You see her for five minutes and she's gone. And you think Larry's the throwaway character in that scene. Right. <laughs> yeah. Because when you're introduced to Larry, he has got up in the middle of the night because Sally went to the, to Kathy's apartment. Her brother's staying with him. He walks naked from the bathroom. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and and, and, uh, and then back to his room. Um, and so when you're introduced to you think he's the throwaway character. And it turns out that it just circles back to he is, he's one of the protagonists. And you yeah. just didn't know. Yeah. Um, so to me, this this is a... <clears throat> this is an episode about love stories, mm -hmm. about love stories that could have been and should have been and might mm. have been. And, and like you said, not missing out on life because the Weeping Angels, <clears throat> they, they feed on the they, – they send you back in time and they feed on the potential energy of the days that you should have had, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's about that. It's about all of what might have been and all of what is and how what might have been still can hurt when you think about it. Because Sally and and uh, and Billy could have been a great love story, could have been a great romance. Right. Yeah, yeah. And to her, it played out in an afternoon. 
Right. You know, because she she's she meets him as she leaves the uh, video shop. There's a guy watching the TV and the guy going, why does why doesn't she just go to the police? Why do they never go to the police? And so Sally goes, goes to the police. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, she meets Billy and and they hit it off. I mean, he, he he's like, uh, I told him I had the rest of the I told him I took the rest of the day off, told him I have a family emergency. And she says, why'd you do that? And he said, life is short and you're hot. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. Too. <laughs> life is short and you're hot. <laughs> and he finally talks her into giving her his, you know, you, giving, giving him her phone number. So he has her phone number, right? Yep. And then, uh, and then the weeping, as she leaves, the weeping angel sent him back in time. And he went back to 1969, which is where the doctor was. And the doctor talks to him and he ends up getting married and has a whole life and is old and is dying and is told he's going to die on that, on the day he meets Sally, uh, uh, Sparrow, uh, on the day he met her and that he should, you know, get a hold of her and have her come visit him at his hospital. And that he had until the rain stops. Yeah. Uh, and when the rain stops, he dies. And, you know, he tells her, you know, you know, he married another woman. Her name was Sally too. Yeah. And, and the, you know, he says, I have until the rain stops. And she goes, this is the same rain. Or he goes, it was raining when we met. And she goes, yeah. this is the same rain. Yeah. And there's just this, wow. There's just this, uh, maybe it's a trick. Maybe it's an illusion. Maybe it's the illusion of profundity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's the, the illusion of the profound nature because, and it's easy to do that when you have time machines to play with. I guess. Uh, but it was just this, so, such a sense of loss there, such a sense of the loss of what could have been, yeah, you know? Yeah. And then she's, you know, after they finish, after they, after they manage to, to, to escape the weeping angels, which I'll get to that in a minute. That's probably yeah. my least favorite part of the story. Um, at least the execution of it. She has a hard time connecting to, to Larry, even though they should be romantic, right. we we can see that they should be romantically connected. Yeah, and and because she's focused on figuring out how the doctor knew all these things right. until Larry goes out for milk, and she sees the doctor and Martha get out of a car, and she goes out and addresses the doctor as if he should know her, and he's never seen her before, and she remembers he's got a time machine. He's never met me before. To him, this is before everything started. Right. And to me, it's after the story's over. To him, it's just the prologue. To me, it's the epilogue. Right. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and so the literary part of me is like, I, I kind of love this. And she, <laughs> I totally love it. <laughs> and then she gives him the packet of stuff because it wasn't just the manuscript that Larry had, but it was a whole packet. It was pictures and it was all this detailed information and the letter that, that Kathy had given her and the pictures from Kathy. She just gives it all to the doctor and says, you're going to need this. Yeah. And, and, you know, so you're going to get sent back in time. You're going to get trapped in 1969. Make and when sure you happens, have this with you. <laughs> you're going to need this. Yeah. And, uh, and then when Larry sees them, she reaches out and grabs his hand and you know that it's going to be okay. See, that's, that's one of my favorite parts actually, I think, because that, that, the, the interaction, uh, there from when, you know, he, is there something else holding you back from committing to us? And, and then that, the hand holding at the end, it was like, oh, yeah, yeah that's a beautiful, it was this, touch. just a beautiful the symbolic touch. gesture that lets you know, okay, she can move forward now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so this whole thing is about, to me, it's about um, the cyclical action of relationships. And it's not necessarily a time machine. Sometimes anything else can throw off a relationship. So you're hitting it off with somebody and then anything else can throw it all into disarray. And then all of that potential energy just wastes away. Yeah. Because it's gone now. That's... Because something changed it. And that's just the way life is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Ugh>. <laughs> <laughs> Which that is kind of deep and and profound. Yeah, yeah, um, I like that. I like that too. I I feel like I should write a song on that now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What's your, what's your favorite line of the of the episode? <sighs> you know, I, when I was going through it, there's a whole bunch of things that I was I was writing now. Um, and, and they're just they're the dumb things. I feel like you know. So my song actually starts with uh, "I love old things; they make me feel sad." You know, <laughs> because I love that. I love that line. It's not my favorite, but and she, it's, it's, it was just sad like, is you know, good. Sad is happy. Sad. For, it's, it's it's happy for deep for deep people. <laughs> yes, it's happy for deep people. I, <laughs> I you know I I wrote that. I paused it and wrote that down. Yeah, 
That was that was definitely uh, one of them. And but the little things like uh, you know even the you know I'm a bit freaked out making you coffee. <laughs> you know I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That really dumb. But again, but uh, how can my name be uh, written here? How is that possible? Just uh, just the the thought of that sort of uh, uh, it's touched on me. Yeah. Um, let's see what else do we have here. Life is short and you're hot. Yeah, and I then, love that one. Yes. And at the end, life is long and you're hot. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that what he said life is long and you're hot at the end yep so yeah, yeah. anyway <laughs> life is long and you're hot uh what, what else do we have this is my timey wimey detector it goes ding when you know you know stuff. i gotta say i was expecting you to um yeah that the whole timey wimey obviously that's classic <laughs> Right. Sort wibbly, of wobbly, wibbly, timey, wobbly, wimey. timey, wimey. Um, you know, but we, where, when the, the part that I thought you were going to be writing about was Easter egg because they have the well, Easter egg in the DV at the back of the DVDs. I and was like, also, I bet Mikey's going to write something that's going to have, have a Easter egg in it. <laughs> and also, my egg, egg plays into this too because the, uh. the timey, wimey detector, it, uh, it also makes eggs explode. Uh, <laughs> right. I think he said it 50 meters or whatever. That's was unfortunately, unfortunately, it happens whether you want it to or not. But, <laughs> so I try and stay away from chickens now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 but also, you know, the way he's describing, uh, interestingly, the way he's describing uh, time, he, it's, I feel like it's kind of egg shaped in the, <laughs> when yeah, you know, it's a, big, it's a, little, a big ball, ball. of timey, wimey. You know? Yeah. Uh, big ball, of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. Um, <laughs> I loved the uh, I loved the phrase "lonely assassins." Yes, that's definitely one of one I had too. Um, the only psychopaths in the universe to kill you nicely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I do love the the uh, again back to uh, Detective Shipton when he says, "You're missing the big question." Will you have a drink with me? <laughs> yes. You know, why? Yes. Because life is short and you are hot. You know, the, the yeah. line before that too, you know, uh, that's just, it's just fun. Um, I have it till the rain stops. I, I've got the I rain have stops. till the rain stops. Yeah. I have till the rain stops. Yep. Yeah, the uh, the I I feel like you know there's there's a lot of it's it's interesting looking at some of the quotes you know you talk about quotable and uh, you know Firefly of course is super duper quotable right. um, and I think better quotable but there are some real gems here they're just different uh, very different in their how they uh, how they how they come about you know um, it's and I just I love how how it's explained here so. They live um, off the energy of all the days you might have had, yeah. all your stolen moments, and, and uh, all your stolen moments. All I your stolen, that. oh, stolen. That's the one I. Missed. That's the one I took. That's oh, yeah? the one I used. That and uh, rain stops. I used Sparrow and Nightingale, but not a direct quote. <clears throat> yeah. um, you know, I used Vanish in the Rain, but all those stolen moments just all just vanish in the rain. I used. You know all those stolen moments, and then the the rain metaphor. I mean, I used some of the energy. Im, I used a lot of the imagery. I just didn't use direct quotes. Yeah. And so, you know, I, 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 I you know, at, at some point, I stopped taking notes and started writing. Um, you know, I loved I, for whatever reason, and they're just simple lines. I'm coming, and I can't stay here. Yeah. Um, See, I, and, I like a lot of the, the, the doctors at the end too. The complex life things don't always happen in the right order. It's a, it's a bit confusing time, especially at weddings. I'm rubbish yes. at weddings, especially my own. <laughs> That's a different story. Yes, <laughs> and it's it's fancy. And so I just these are the notes I wrote. I said it's a love story. It's a story of cyclic beginnings. In this story, the cause happens after the effect, but only from one point of view. Um, it's and then I said it's like the future imperfect tense when you're speaking. Um, because, you know, in the, in the future, perfect tense, you'd say, I will go to this, I will go to the movie or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if future imperfect, uh, posits that you have already done that in the future. So I will have gone to the movie. Right. <laughs> so that's future imperfect tense. And so I started, and so I was like, that's where I started, which was oh, the nice. words future imperfect. Uh, but you know, in, in, in her future, she met him, but that was his past in her future. And by the time, by the time she saw the message, um, 
she'll have given him all the information he needed to guide her to the moment they met, which will have already happened for him, but will right. still be in her future. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just sitting here scribbling this down going, this is, this is, I'm just figuring out and then figuring out how I'm going to write the song. Cause I can see, cause my song is this big jumbled timey wimey mess <laughs> called future imperfect. And it's about, oh, it's, nice. a, it's about, it's about the doctor and Sally together. Uh -huh. And it's also about Sally and Kathy and also Sally and Larry. And it's, I mean, it's, and, uh, but I mean, the chorus is, uh, future and perfect. I will have met you by then and you will have filled me oh. in so I could find you the first time. Oh, nice. Um, and you know, future and perfect, a conversation through years, a mingling of laughter and tears and all these reasons without rhyme. And it's perfectly imperfect by design. Uh, Nice. And and it's just uh I guess this song is more a, a love letter to Stephen Moffat's writing. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz it's the English geek in me, you know, yeah. freaking out about, you know, okay, well, are you, so this his his prologue is her epilogue and her <clears throat> you know and her, her prologue is his uh in media res and <laughs> I mean <laughs> uh but when you look at it all right, so when when the doctor describes it as this ball of tiny <clears throat> wimey stuff, right? Yeah, you you get to see how things are happening at the same time, physically in the episode, even though they already happened and are happening in the future. So in 1969, none of this has happened yet, but it's already happened, and in the present, uh, that has already happened, but it's happening for the first time. And in the whole thing, it's like there are two uh, noodles of timey wimey stuff that are finally just aligning <laughs> in the right space to where they work together so that you can see them. And it's just like, it's a ball of wibbly yeah. wobbly timey, timey wimey, wimey stuff. stuff. <laughs> and, and it's such an infantile <laughs> quote and everybody loves it, but it just works here. It yeah. just works here. It totally, totally works. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I was I was sure I was going to use um, I used the word blink once and I, I was sure I was going to use that as the metaphor of the song because it's the you know, the one, you know, it's the one. Yes. I mean, it was the big one. Yeah. yeah. And and it should be used. Um, gosh, I hope yours. I, I, I used hope it. You realized I used it. it. Okay, good, good. <laughs> I didn't mean to, but I did. <laughs> because I, but, it's, it's just one of those that I was like all right, but that's just not going to work with what I'm seeing here. And I was like, but it needs to be some, something has, somebody needs to do something with it. If we're, if, if there's going to be a song written, somebody has to use, you know, don't close your eyes or blink yeah. or, or don't look away any of these things. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think with that uh, description, we should uh, hear your song. So shall, shall we play it right here? Yeah, so uh, in this ball of timey-wimey stuff, uh, we're going to the future where I will record the song that I've already written, and then I will send it back to the past, and we'll put it in right now. <laughs> Telling twist 
Sometimes frozen fell before you knew to ask future and perfect. I will have met you by then, and you will have filled me in so I could find you the first time. Future and perfect. A conversation. I'm just going to say that that was awesome, Mikey. That was amazing. <laughs> I can't believe. I mean, it touched me on so many levels. <laughs> I'm going to go and write the most insipid piece of crap <laughs> and put it in in post. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> All right. So. All right. We've heard mine, and everybody needs to, uh, I guess, now we need to hear yours. Okay, so yeah, so mine, I ended up calling Blink. Um, and, and again, when I started writing it, um, I did not want to use necessarily use Blink. In fact, I was trying to uh, reverse it a little bit so that I, it wasn't necessarily about uh, called Blink. But ultimately, I called it Blink. Um, <laughs> but my, So the, the story, of course, uh, of, of mine is about, again, missing out. It's about, um, you know, and it's not just about missing out. It's also about realizing that there is so much that we have the potential of missing out. The things that, you know, we our, our world is, is so and we, we watch TV shows, we stare at our phones instead of living, instead of going out and trying to just say, you know, <laughs> you're. Uh, you're hot, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go do that because uh, I'm going to live in the moment. And this is, and this is a time is life is short. So that was the whole, the whole premise of, about my, uh, my song is that I want something that says, um, you know, to live in the present. I uh, certainly, uh, this, so the song, uh, obviously a lot of the lyrics are very much inspired by, by Dr. Who, uh, some of the content, like some of my songs too, I, I ended up, a, it's about my wife because, because from the early days when I was staring at my phone a little too much, um, she would say, Mark, stop, <laughs> you know? And I was like, you know, you're absolutely right. And, and now, you know, 10 years later, I'm, I'm so grateful to her for that because, you know, I, I don't use my phone that much. Uh, I, I still use it a fair amount, but there's, 
it's a lot less instead of just uh, you know doom scrolling on on Facebook and not even being on Twitter and barely looking at Instagram I you know I get on it now and then just to do a little bit of work and there's a lot of things on there that I can do work with but that's about it so the idea was to to focus on on you know life is too short so we're gonna we're, we're gonna live for the moment so it starts of course with the I love the old things they make me feel sad because I just love that line um, yeah. but then and why you know because it takes me back to the past i i um when before i i got married when i was when i was single and living alone i i watched um movies on repeat over and over and over again and it was my comfort zone you know i'd sit in my be do, doing work at night and usually by when i say work at night i was kind of brain dead for the rest of the day so i was just you know uh, social network <laughs> on <clears throat> on um what was it live journal i'd social network on live journal while i had a movie on and then i'd stop and stare at the movie for a while and then chat some more or whatnot um and that you know it was it was sort of a good time but it sort of it was a you know a reflection of the past um mm-hmm. but then things changed and i couldn't close my eyes i couldn't even blink because you know you're worried that if you do you miss out and you disappear i love the line disappeared into time but uh, yeah. um and so then the, the second verse i i move into uh basically the the shipton uh, uh sparrow interaction where you know i asked you out for a drink while the rain fell down um and you know whereas the shipton i think was a lot more uh confident of saying uh i try not to think that you might turn me down <laughs> which i he was pretty solid you know just just tell me what you want <laughs> mm-hmm. i uh, um that's the line probably more reflects me i think in there but uh then then there's you're like an angel as old as the universe you save me from a loneliness that is so much worse and uh um that that's a mix and matching of of my uh, wife and the show obviously for there the chorus then goes in the don't blink don't look away life is too short i won't blink i won't turn my back let go of the hurt uh and the when, this is where i had made some changes um uh, my my wife actually made the changes she does some of my editing now and then and i had specifically veered away from saying don't blink <laughs> because it's such a classic line but uh, she put it back in and she hasn't seen the show so <laughs> i was like okay it's good with me um the final verse is touches on again a lot of it there's a little moments where it touches on doctor who so things don't always happen like we dream and plan it's confusing at times that's why i take your hand and of course you know there's the you know references to the doctor with the you know things don't always happen in same time periods and whatnot and then but the the comfort of taking someone's hand and growing old with them um and you know opening your eyes to what what could be um, and not missing out. And that's, uh, that's the full on song. Now I love how the, the lyrics came out and all around I'm, I'm in the music. I'm really happy. Although I will say that I, I feel like <laughs> as I was singing it, I was saying, I was thinking that I might've been channeling a little Mikey in the, in the song. <laughs> when I was singing <laughs> As a part, I'm like, that sounds sort of like what Mikey would do in something <laughs> in one of his songs. So You're either that. welcome uh, or I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. Or, um, <laughs> damn you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're but the man other, or I apologize. Yes. But the other best thing about this is that um, so last week I needed to do a, a, a you know my first rewatch. I tried to watch it at least twice, and I asked my daughter Kinsey to come sit down and watch the episode with me, and she absolutely loved it. She loved the episode. It uh, made her so happy, um, and she was like you know giddy as could be. But then I played her the song uh, a couple of days ago after I wrote it. And oh my gosh, she's like, oh, that one, that line. Oh, that's, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was the best thing to hear her like, you know, geek out on, on the individual lyrics, you know, and she's like, that song is just perfect. And then I send it to my wife and she says, no, don't change anything. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but, so it was, it was, it just made me so uh, thrilled that she, uh, could understand what the song is about and and could relate to it. It was just uh, just magical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's hear it. Uh, all right, let's let's play it.
I love old things They make me feel sad Take me back to the past And all the happiness I had When I met you I could not close my eyes I couldn't even blink Lest you disappeared into time Ask you out for a drink While the rain fell down I tried not to think That you might turn me down You're like an angel as old as the universe You save me from a lonely life that is so much worse Don't blink, don't look away Life is too short I won't blink, I won't turn my back Let go of the hurt I won't play Things don't always happen Like we dream and plan It's confusing at times That's why I take your hand To grow long as time goes by You showed me this moment And you opened up my eyes Don't blink, don't look away Life is too sure I won't blink, I won't turn my back Let go of the hurt she loved it <laughs> thank you so totally very much she loved it so all, all right. right so if we have we any other it. songs we should um we'll share those at this point in time right yeah uh, if there's anything we put them right there right here yes <laughs> yeah sorry fixed point in time <laughs> <laughs> oh my, my gosh my bad. that that was perfect mikey <laughs> that was perfect <laughs> Uh, but, but uh, I realized I never said why I didn't really like the the Weeping Angel climax scene. Oh and yeah, so yeah, yeah. It just felt ham handed. It felt look. There are several moments in that where the Weeping Angels can all see each other. Yeah. I mean, honestly. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay, there was. I did notice that too. And it and there's moments when there, she's not looking at them. And it's like, why don't you just touch them? Just right. You know, right. she's not looking at you. <laughs> they move faster than you can imagine, right? And then right. And there are there are moments where the actors blink. And I think I was like, I really wish the director would have been like, I know we're on a schedule, but you're going <laughs> to do this until you stop blinking. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. You know, uh, we can't digitally edit, you know, your your blinks out, but you're going to stop blinking or we're not paying you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I, I will give you the, 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 that. I'd still love the the uh, conclusion. I, I thought it was a smart little 
uh, it twist was of an ending brilliant. with all the angels staring at each other while they're shaking the TARDIS. Um, and it just makes me wonder if it, you know, is it peripheral vision? Because they could, you right. know, they're at least like two of them could see each other out of their peripheral vision at right. least. Right? right. And so it just seemed like it violated its own premise a lot all the <laughs> way through. Um <laughs> Because there was a whole lot of not looking at the angels and the weeping angels didn't always – the weeping angels, which move incredibly – So, they so move say is the, the doctor. They move incredibly fast. They move at the speed of plot apparently because right. <laughs> when the plot says, no, they ain't moving, they ain't a moving. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, and, and that that is really well, a minor minor now, quibble that boils uh, you down know to what it occurs to me, uh, Mikey. I think we are you are wrong, and I'll tell you why. And that is because uh, I was looking at the angel. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those wibbly wobbly timey whimey things. things. <laughs> I get it. Okay, I see. Uh, so now as you long know. As we're watching the angel through time and space, <laughs> then, time and then, space. It, then the noodles lay over each other and they can't move. So uh, you, see? you uh, win, Mark. You win. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> now my turn for the mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Let's thank our patrons and let them end this episode, please. Oh, you bet. <laughs> as you know, Mikey and I make our living as full-time musicians. We love creating our music for you, but it would be near impossible to release as much great music and podcasts if it wasn't for the generosity of people like you. So if you enjoyed this show, please support what you love. Your generosity pays for the production and the promotion of our music and this podcast. I am extremely grateful to everyone who supports my Gun Runners Club on Patreon. You are also generous with your support, so thank you so much. Uh, thanks to my newest patron, George Mears. I also want to thank each of these incredible patrons. Not Higgins, C.J. Taylor, Melinda and Jeremiah Wesley, Sarah Crockett, Bill Mandeville, William McCassick, Brian Morin, Carol Burrill, Kurt Goodyear, Miranda Nelson, Jan Sinkush, Luke Miller, Josh Brown, Laura Mae Sorkin, Scott and Melanie Weinhausen, uh, Doris Lane, Alexis, James O'Dell, Eric Ray, Marie Alm, James Reagan, Les Howard, Kerry Whitney, Tim o M. O'Brien, and Troy Rogers. Thank you so much for supporting uh, my music. And, and I've got to say thank you to my amazing Patreon patrons as well. They also keep the music being made, especially Oops Wrong Cookie, Amy Stewart, Michael Candlewall, Josh Logan, Amy Morris, Les Howard, Brian Jackie, John Height, John R. Woolard, Scott Mealy, Randy Brown, Robin Abbas, Scott and Melanie Weinhusen, and Jeremy D. Jackson and Jennifer Lewis, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You you make life possible for me, and I, that's you know that's not lip service. You you make my life possible, and uh, I can't I can't adequately express how much I appreciate it. Yeah. So what's uh, what's what's next on the list? So next up, we have uh, Rankin and Bass presents The Hobbit, uh, which I'm excited to do. I'm a little bit uh, nervous too. I gotta say, I don't know about yeah. you. It sounds like the greatest adventure to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you rock. All right, I'm just going to roll credits now. Bye, all. <laughs> <laughs> Another mic drop for Mikey. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. You can download many of our songs when you sign up on our Patreon pages. Find out more about Mark Gunn and Mikey Mason, how to support our music on Patreon. We'd love your comments, your suggestions, songs, or lyrics, or links to videos to share in the next show. Use the hashtag in the verse. You can post them on the Blue Sun Tour Facebook page or email me at Mikey at MikeyMason.com. In the Verse was produced by Mark Gunn and Mikey Mason. Sign up on our website and find out more about the Blue Sun Tour when it happens at fireflydrinkingsongs.com. 